Hello, everyone. Today, our lesson is about post-impressionism. So last time we talked about impressionism. That's where the modern art starts. And as the word post means, so it's coming after. So already with some modifications. Um, and still, so just again, a bit to recap what was happening. Let's say we used to have more or less like realistic art. And then we remember the story about the photo camera invented. And that's why the artists were like in little troubles. But since the photo camera was still black and white, so they were working lots of with colors. Yeah. And so like this, the impressionism emerged yeah actually and then they invented this name because of the word impression it was um one painting was called like this and then of course they started to develop more and now we're going to explore a bit the differences very quickly just with some painting examples uh, with uh, let's say realistic and impressionism so let's say there would be a drawing of the ball with fruits. And then we see later, so this is already, I would say, even um, post-impressionism. Uh, okay. It's painting by Paul Cezanne. Yeah, so we see how really different it looks. Yeah, the style. So it was in the start, and then this guy experimented already with shape, with colors looking differently. Or let's say, let's check these ones. So some typical landscape painting, and then we get a painting by Van Gogh. So you see already some those strokes or just different way they apply paint. So they like really those strokes, yeah, especially Van Gogh. Well, and of course the main hero of post-impressionism is Van Gogh. So you can try and analyze um, this is a painting by Rembrandt. So of course you heard about him, um, a huge artist. And here is self-portrait of Van Gogh. Yeah, so we kind of, it's easy to feel the, the difference. And so we are exploring this post-impressionism. Yeah, um, again, maybe just one more. So uh, a typical Dutch painting they really liked drawing um, everyday life. Yeah, and let's say then Impressionism, what also happened, they started going out and they started painting outside, that it's called plain air. And here you see how the figures are made differently. They're not so precise. There are more like some dots and those brush strokes, yeah? So we get the, the feeling. So cool, today, post-impressionism. And the painting we're gonna do today is the um, Night Cafe by Vincent van Gogh. And I've chosen this one because I would like us also quickly to recap how to build a central perspective. Yeah, we already did once the room. And so it should not be hard. We're gonna do it, yeah, step by step together. So you also wanna try to find a ruler, yeah? So if you have one, just grab, it's, yeah, and then the pencil we're gonna start. Okay. So actually, probably the vertical position is better. Mm -hmm. um, so again, so to do the perspective, the central perspective, it's uh, very important to know like two things. So there are like parallel lines. So in real life, the, the line of the bottom of the house, the line of the top of the house, the line of the streets, they are parallel in real life. But to make 
it on our flat 2D paper to the surface. We want to make this 3D effect. And then we show it by, so the lines, they are going to meet in one point. So this line and this line here and this and this, they all will be meeting and also the roofs from here. And this is how we're going to start doing, how we're going to build our perspective. So I would say already it's kind of in the middle, like really central. So feel free just to place a dot in the center of your painting. And now we're going to construct um, huh, Ellie. So we have started just by placing a dot in the middle, right in the middle, from top and from right and left, more or less the middle. Then you take a ruler and we're going to start constructing the lines. Um, feel free not to push your pencil too hard because it's constructive lines, then we're going to be raising what's not necessary. So for example, the line of the house, it's starting here. Ah, we see a little bit higher than um, the bottom. So somewhere here. And I'm just bringing the line from here to the center. Yeah. Cool. Nice, let's do another one. Let's say we have also another line of the pavement kind of divides the part of the cafe and the, where the people are walking. And maybe it's a bit higher. Yeah, so again, we, we notice where it starts. Maybe somewhere here. And again, all we need to do, we just bring it to the center. Mm -hmm. Nice, let's do two more. It's already easy, you found, uh, you understood the, so it's kind of the, there is the part of, let's say, uh, the pedestrian part, and that's still like the street part. So still we have some line here. So at the bottom, one maybe here, yeah. So two points, and again, very easy. We're bringing it all to the center. Nice. Let's say we have here the other side of the street. So we have all these lines from the sky and it also will be going down here. So at the top of our paper, not, not, not really in the corner, leaving some space, we also bring it to the center. Okay. Remember, so what lines we bring to the center? All lines that are parallel between themselves in real life. Yeah, so this, this side of the street is parallel to that one. The house has, so it was the uh, upper part. We're going to construct the bottom part. We have a corner here, yeah? But still basically from a uh, bit maybe a bit lower than the, than the dot, yeah? We're gonna also have one more line. Okay, this will be enough. 
with lines for now. We're going to start doing um, some horizontal divisions. So then our image becomes more um, Cool, so what we can do? Okay, one easy thing from this upper line, we bring just a straight line. So this is important that in perspective, the straight lines, the, the vertical ones, they're always straight. They're not going like, you know, to the sides. And you can always easy compare it with the side of your paper because the paper is always straight. So it helps not to, and I'm doing this straight line till this point. So from here till this line. Yeah, now I can erase this corner a bit. And I can do a corner like this. And I have already my the kind of it's the corner of the house. We're gonna have there. All right. Uh, let's build the the main one, the the cafe scenery. So here we see the window, and it's kind of frontal. So again, we remember like the frontal things. So these lines are horizontal and vertical, just straight. So no diagonal is not going anywhere. Yeah. And where it leaves, I would say, so from our dot, we make this square and it's gonna be our frontal window. Yeah, and we can clean up in the middle. Yeah. So this is, this will be the place where this Cafe window leaves, and we see nicely there. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit smaller, actually. Make it, we can make it a bit to the line. Okay, let's make it nice. And then let's make this terrace. And you notice how it goes. Look, this part is really bigger. And then the terrace goes inside and it kind of meets our window that we just made. Yeah? So basically, it's this line. And somewhere here, we go just straight. You can straight away go a little bit um, Let's say making the thickness so it's terrace, so we can feel the. Yeah, and here we can also connect. So, still, we remember uh -huh, where our dot was in the corner. So, still, I can connect my house, the uh, sorry, the terrace of. Yeah, here I adjust a bit so it fits. Cool. Again, cleaning up inside so the construction lines don't bother what uh, I want to build. But here already we have some kind of ready the um, showing the street view. If something is not working, please let me know. Now yeah, we're gonna... Cool. I'm done. Okay, perfect. So now let's do the, the house. So this frontal house, we actually, we don't see where it ends. We don't see its roof. We only see the first floor 
and a bit of bluish of the second floor. So basically this line of the window goes really up till the end. Yeah. And and we can construct so everything that is not parallel we are allowed to construct um you know so let's say maybe this uh how you call it it's kind of pair this it's kind of like the one that is covering the, the tables but actually, no, what I'm telling, like this line is also in its way meeting the center. So this line is also kind of going to our um the perspective rules are not that hard. Uh, just practice them a bit and, you know, then um, then you can construct all the different landscapes easier. Um, I would say... Okay, two, okay, three more things and we're gonna finish with pencil, I promise. And then we can start having more fun. So we're gonna create also this blue entrance and notice how big it is. It takes almost the whole height of our painting. It starts lower than the terrace and it ends more or less where our, this kind of a thing, the, the, the roof, over the terrace. Huh? So let's say start somewhere here. Mm -hmm. I can bring also the line up. Yeah, I can do maybe just yeah. and which line again is going to the central point? The one here. Yeah? So again, because it's parallel. The bottom of the house, the bottom of the windows, the upper line of the doors. If it's parallel, then it all will be going to this central point. So if here I want to construct this roof, I just choose where it lives. It lives like high. And then I just go again to this point. Yeah, so like this. Ah, oh, look, actually it's going to be. This is the, and here if I choose, here I'm correcting myself as well, like this. And this also helps us to build perspective when we um, place some bigger elements close to us, like this entrance, and then we have some parts that are smaller. So maybe in real life, this door, this entrance door, is the same height as this window. But to show in perspective, we change this. Uh, yeah, and here I can also make the... It's all right, detailing. Nice door we have cool. mm -hmm. how it feels girls is it hard or it's fine fine says Juliet it's fun oh I'm happy to hear these word that it's fun cool well then um let's do quickly this side of the house. And then I'm gonna also talk a little bit about the tables that we also need special rule, how to show them in perspective. So here are the houses. Let's analyze again. Here we have some house that looks a little bit like frontal. 
So maybe it like the street ends with the house there. So we can actually like somewhere here, place this frontal house. Yeah? So again, I erase the lines I don't need. And here at the bottom, I can also do the straight line. So the street is going, is going, and it's ending in some um, part. So basically, this area here is our line of the streets. And here are probably maybe in Van Gogh's painting, there are like three houses. But what happens in perspective? If I want to place three houses in this area, I can't do this like equally. I can't divide. So this would be wrong. Because in perspective, the closer house to us will probably take the half. So here where we see the corner with the light, that is probably also some shop. It's going to take the half of the, of the whole space. Yeah? And the rest we can divide again in, yeah, maybe in two. And again, one half is a bit bigger than the other. So here I have three lines and I have three houses, but they have different width. Otherwise, perspective won't be, you know, credible. Nice. What else I can do? Um, let's say, for example, I want to show here with the roofs. So we see they're not all houses are connecting one to each other. So maybe there is some like, so here I can make a little bit, you know, like this. Yeah. And it feels already. So this house ends here. Let's say this is the roof of one house. And this is the roof of the other there. And yeah, we can have here. So just by putting the small horizontal lines in the roof, I can break this pattern and then it can all look fun. We can add the cafe. Again, remember our central point. So if I want to make a cafe here at the bottom, I choose, OK, how big? This is the height of the house somewhere here. And again, I go here to my central point, go like this. And this will be the line where the cafe is living. And then maybe the, there is the, the thing that says the name of the cafe. And here are some also windows. Yeah? So we can have the. Maybe here is to be the entrance door. Cool. We can later play a bit more with this. Well, actually, Van Gogh actually placed here a tree. If you want, we can also have a tree there. Nice. And so one more thing about we have tables. So we have terrace. It's still empty. Let's do some tables. So perspective rule says the object that is closer to us, these tables are closer, we draw them bigger, bigger than those ones in the end. So the ones that are next to the window, much smaller. And tables are round, but in perspective, everything what's round becomes um, oval. Yeah? So if the table in real life is round, in perspective, it's going to become oval. Yeah? And I can have smaller oval or also bigger oval. Yeah? And this one depends how far away the table, so it lives from this central point, because where our central point is, that's the line of the horizon. The, the horizon line is actually the lines of our view. 
So um, if I'm standing more far away, I see kind of more, more of the table. But if the table is closer, it kind of goes more narrow. Yeah? And um, so here we can play and place different ovals. So of course here like smaller tables, bigger tables. So this is also we're taking in account table for four, table for um, just for two. Yeah, here are some tables on the side as well. Yeah, so a wider oval when it's lower from this dot, from this point, and when it's going closer to the dot, then I almost don't see the surface of the table. Then I see basically just uh, cool. Let's analyze. Oh, the, the shape is nice. Some legs. You can invent also your legs for the tables. Don't have to follow the Van Goghs. If you you can, of course, if you if you want. He actually did different legs for each table. And when drawing people, the same rule as we did with the entrance door, with the tables. If the person is closer to me, he's standing somewhere here. If I would like to draw a person standing here, he would be maybe that big as the hole of my pencil. And the people that are walking there, behind there are really small. They're maybe just, you know, just that big. But the people standing here where the shop is, I can also draw a pedestrian street here. Maybe there are some people. Yeah, here is already, I see more. I see a lady with a, with a hat there or something. And, and, uh, and the man, maybe they're going to the cafe. So they're already bigger. So here is the size for one. Here are the size of people walking like really small. Yeah. Also the waiter, if I want to place a waiter there. The same thing, if we want to do the, um, the pavement. So we notice that in um, Van Gogh's painting, there are, um, the pavement is made from stones. Yeah, so those uh, round stones. And again, so if I'm... So here at the bottom, I'm going to placing bigger ones, bigger, those half circles. So to, to make it, yeah. And then let's say somewhere here, already they become smaller. Yeah. Oops, sorry, here I'm going to, so, so here, my pavement, my bricks, my, those stones are bigger. Here, they're already small. You also don't need to, to draw all these stones, I mean, you can if you want. Sometimes it's also enough to to show just few of them, and then we just cover basically with the color. And uh, but just the feeling that here are very tiny, tiny lines. We already don't see them. Here is still bigger, and you can actually. Later, when you are out somewhere, you can observe this perspective in real life. And you will, uh, you know, so you will see it already with the eyes of the artist. Because you know the perspective rules and you will say, aha, so I'm standing here and I see this window is closer to me, is bigger. But the window in the end of the house looks smaller. And of course, I know the windows are the same. They're from the same house. But um, the perspective shows them. Yeah. 
don't worry about making people figures. Um, that's another topic we might address some other times. Just draw some like roundy shapes. So you see also I'm not doing no particular um, chairs or and um so what we would say so we are talking about impressionism and post impressionism so we already talked the main difference between the realistic art and and the impressionism one but between those so what actually changed why the the word post-impressionism appeared because it started to be already less realistic. Um, and it kind of were exploring more, also more geometrical ways how to show. So we feel that Van Gogh, he has more geometrically changed the ways um, of how something can be drawn. So it's not just only about the color, the color stays, the color is still vivid, interesting. The shadows are not black, the shadows are blue, purple, green. And um... that's not an easy sketch, but I'm happy. We've spent the time doing it. Mm -hmm. So then I hope it will be fun also to color. And the color, I'm, I want to give you the whole freedom. You've been following a lot till now. So then you can feel free and to color how you want. So of course, let's say, if I want to show it's the night, because for example, now I can color my painting and maybe it's a daytime. No? So in Van Gogh, it's obviously nighttime. And if you want to show night, then the contrast is very important. And then it means I really need to show very light and bright the parts that have light. So the cafe area and the shop, some, some light in the windows. And the rest pretty much is dark, so I will need to make the sky, the buildings there, more darker. Huh? And maybe some also entrance doors. Cool. Take the time you need to um, finish the sketch. Another. And... If you have any questions, girls, please ask. You can also show your drawing if something, let's say, not getting the way um, you want it to be. I will do my best to help you out.
I'm ready. Nice. You both ready to continue? Wow. Ellie, I'm impressed. Looks awesome. Juliet, what about yours? Or is it sticked to the... Ah, you also have it. Oh, cool, girls. Oh, you have people there. Okay. Well, let's make it fun and colorful. Oh, wait, I want to draw a cat. <gasps> yes. Thank you, Ellie. That was also my idea. And so good that you also thought about it and you reminded me. Let's put a cat. We can put it wherever everyone wants. We can actually be putting the cats among all our paintings. All right, I have placed my cat at the top of the door. And it can be actually a little bit bigger, maybe. Since. So my cat is here. Okay. I mean, I'm going to make it black. So the silhouette is going to make it also look better. Uh, another maybe little tip, since we're still with pencil, always think about thicknesses everywhere. Like everything has thickness. And if you're going to show it, your drawing will always be more realistic. So let's say table. It's not just oval. Here I'm adding a bit thicker line, the closer one, and then it looks better. Yeah? So... Um, even if you are drawing a piece of paper that is thin, it's still also going to have a thickness and showing it. Here the door as well, but it's already detailed. Cool, let's get to the colors. So I put two cats. You put two? Nice. Where are they? I put one sleeping on top of the door, and the other one is, like, by the shop thingy in the corner. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's a so cool. All right. So today is really challenging. We've recapped the central perspective. That was harder when we did the room once. And... So now we're also going to do next challenge, showing the night and showing the light. So we're going to start with yellow, as usually. We're starting with lightest color, and we're going to try to make it bright and clean. So what I also like to do, I kind of remove a little bit the excess of pencil. So it's not kind of bothering too much. Just a little bit here where the cafe is. Not too much, like, yeah. Just so this area stays clean. Mm -hmm. Like the areas where the dark blue is, is fine. So basically the color is the yellow. We're going to use the blues. The ultramarine blue 
was Van Gogh's favorite, but you can use, of course, the other ones. The... Uh, so we see a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. The ultramarine paint was more precious than gold. <gasps> yes, that's true. This fact is true, and you're right. Wow, good knowledge. Yeah, in those times, it's not like nowadays. Uh, it's we just go to the shop, we buy paints. Um, it was like what you could get. Um, nice. Okay, let's get the yellow. And I would suggest you don't use much water for yellow and the opposite, like sit it with the thicker strokes and um, so it's like really Van Gogh style intense and the only thing maybe don't make it all the same you can also use like the medium yellow and you can use the lemon yellow um, so just like it's not that you color all this area. So even if it's all yellow, still make some differences between the yellows. So maybe I'm making a bit darker yellow next to the house. There is more shadow. Maybe the edge will be more. Yeah, or like if you look closer, there is a little, like a little bit of very light green inside uh, this yellow part that Van Gogh did. And of course, I can make my paint lighter and darker also just by using the water. So less water, it means there is more pigment. So the paint is more thick, so dark. And if we use water, then it becomes almost like watercolors, half transparent and... Um, as the next step, I'm gonna I'm taking the sienna, so or just take brown. I'm gonna do the terrace. So it's probably just because it's wooden. Yeah, and again, we remember if no much water, then we can also use this. Um, dry brush technique so it even looks a little bit like wood basically just I'm just leaving the table as well 
I even went kind of a little bit over people. It's fine. Later we can do just the black silhouettes and we can have So I have played with my sienna, use brown, also just a little bit around, maybe making a bit darker some yellowishy parts. And now I've remembered to come back for some windows again, till while my brushes are clean and the water is not so dark, we work with yellow. And then later we can already go. Placing it all more dark. And before we dive into blue color, I suggest we play a little bit with the pavement. And here it's good to make our acrylics more watery. So we remember if I want a thin line, and of course, okay, the thin brush helps, but also the mix should be watery. And what we can do, we can place, so if you have this, your sienna around, you can place a little bit of brownish lines somewhere around. And then we're gonna also add those grayish, yeah, so then in the end, we're going to have a, and again, just playing around. Those definitely don't have to be perfect. The only rule to remember to follow that in the end, they're smaller. So basically even almost, almost not visible. And just in front, you can see them as as lines. And how to make a nice grayish color? It's actually mixing blue and brown. Then you get dark color, but adding a bit of white in it, you're gonna get a very beautiful grayish blue color. Yeah, so take your time, work with um, 
So still, still working with these light colors. And then once you feel okay, time, time to move to the blue color. Try mixing somewhere apart, some blue with some brown. Uh, and again, to the half of this mix that you will get of blue and brown. Add a bit of white and you will see. So you'll get some. What make brown makes blue more calmer. Yeah. So for example, we take ultramarine, a cobalt blue, they are so bright. And sometimes let's say I don't want it to be too bright. So for example, I want sky and some houses to be this bright blue. But the pavement, it's actually here, it's not that dark. First of all, because of also the light of the cafe is, is falling there. And um, not to darken too much the, the painting. So take some blue, mix it with the bit brown, actually like more or less half half. You will get grayish and adding a little bit of white will get you the light grayish. Yeah, and if you want it a bit more bluish, you just add a bit more blue. So if, if in case it looks too dark, yeah, and very beautiful mixes. And in the same way, I can play. And I make them as well, also like pretty much liquid as a puddle. And then I can have Play a bit with this pavement. Like you can always leave it and then come back later as well. We just, why we're doing it at first? Because still kind of playing light. Yes, yeah, still till the moment we make and start making our pen, uh, painting with dark tones and. and I'm placing those lines and if, for example, one line becomes too thick or too dark, I just quickly dip in my brush into the water and then I just dilute it like on the paper. So this, this stroke that feels to me too dark or yeah, also is a technique you can use. Uh, of course, paper towel works nicely. Another technique that, uh, so you don't really need now to make the pavement like all, all with all those liney, tiny lines, just make some, let it dry. And then you can fill in the spaces between them. Just uh, again, when it's dry, you take some half transparent, so kind of liquidish color and just paint and, will nicely fill in the space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take some patience because I'm already willing to do the bluishy part. But yeah. Again, if you're ready to start with blue, think from light to dark. So we here also we have some light blue, dark blue. Starting from this entrance, the frontal part is light, the shadowy part is darker. This house is here. So here in the 
in the middle, they're almost black. But please don't use black in, in a clean way. It's going to make your painting just more dirty. So if, let's say, your blue is not um, black or dark enough, you can add a bit of black to it, mix it on the palette apart, and this color put to the on the painting. Yeah? One should really be a bit careful with the black. It's very easy to have it ruining the painting. There are painters who don't use black at all. So I'm starting with bluish and just with the help of white, creating a light blue. Yeah, and just filling the areas and I can make it like fill in more than it is and later make them darker, the ones I need. Remember again, you can change the darkness with the water, more or less water on the brush. The stars I'm going to make, of course, with white and already after I did the sky. So I'm going to wait till my sky is dry and then I'm going to be placing just white circles there. Yeah, one can, of course, go and leave white as paper. That's also possible. And actually, it's not an easy to make night. So now you will be surprised how much you need to darken different areas of your painting. So it starts to look as the night. Yeah? So please don't be afraid. Use bravely dark blue. I have mixed my blue with a bit of black, but tiny, tiny amount of black. So it still should be bluish. Yeah, and here, of course, again, I don't use much water because then I want to paint to be thicker. It's, imagine if you want to paint a candle that is with fire. So you're going to place some yellow, but then to have a feeling that it's, it's burning, it is actually fire, all the area around you need to make dark. And this darkening like takes time, so you process darkening, darkening.
So let's say if the light is shining in the cafe, so all areas where the light is not reaching, it should be dark. So definitely. There is a tree in the corner. Honestly, I was lazy to go and pick up green. But for those who know color theory, remember well, green is made also blue with yellow. And since we have lots of blue and lots of yellow on our palette, that's what I did. Oh, Well, it's a surprisingly little amount of colors used for this painting. Basically played with yellow, blue, bit of brownish, black and white. Yeah, and if we consider black and white more as health colors, and really minimal. Well, and maybe some few words about Van Gogh himself, since he's, of course, the huge, very famous and great artist. So originally we know that he is from Netherlands, um, where when he started to paint, his paintings were more in a kind of brownish palette, so brownish colors. And only when he went to Paris, his brother was living in Paris, so he went there. And his brother was actually working in the art gallery, so his brother was also helping him. And um, 
There he met all the impressionists and he was so amazed about this bright, colorful palette they were using uh, that, of course, he also implied it. And so his paintings became much more colorful. And... But uh, anyway, if one reads more about Van Gogh, um, we know that he had a difficult life. He was painting a lot, but he had a really hard time selling his paintings. So nowadays, his paintings are worth fortune. But um, those times, no one was buying them. And he, in while he was alive, he sold almost like just really few paintings. Um, So artist life for him was not that um, easy. So now I'm going to show you also what I was um, meaning when I talked about um, filling in. So talking about this area of pavement. So what I have now, I have lots of these little strokes. And now what I can do, I can just take some grayish color that already kind of a lot on, on the palette. Make it pretty much watery. And then I can go filling in the areas. So the only thing, it should be a bit lighter than those parts that those lines we already have. And then I don't really need to go all around them. I just kind of bravely covering on top. And it gives me the layer, but it also keeps my, my strokes, the lines that were there before. Yeah, this is a very, th this technique goes both ways. Or first, I would cover all the pavement with some white neutral color. And then later on top, I would sit those um, lines, the curvy parts. Or as I'm doing now, I'm using this half transparent layer to cover later. Okay. And in this painting, I would also say it's kind of important from time to time. You pause, you sit back on your chair and you take a look how it looks all together. Because here are lots of details. And but it's very important. Our painting uh, looks like a whole all together. Yeah? So and, and when you look at it from more far away, then you can see easier some parts that need correction. No? So a challenging artwork today, it's true.
Whew. Yeah, her job. Take all the time you need to finish. No rush from my side, at least. And I'm just gonna talk about next. Uh, well, I'm also taking the tape off. Next art styles among the modernism that we're gonna explore. So, one of the way that developed also kind of parallel so you have to understand that it's not that like one style ends and the other one starts of course there would still be painters uh, artists who would follow one and in parallel the others who experiment and do others um so among let's say post impressionism uh, among van gogh the others would experiment with pointillism. We definitely did already some pointillism artworks. It's basically with dots. And since uh, in this moment, they were also like really studying in also a bit like scientific way, the art that developed also the color theory. And with pointillism, what they tried to reach they tried make colors mix not in a physical way that I, I take yellow, I take blue, I mix them physically and I get green. But they tried to place lots of yellow dots and among them they would try to place lots of blue dots, but from far away it looks green to us. So this was the experiment. And this was called pointillism, and we can try doing it next time. And yes, but the more important, I'm excited to see how your artworks or your cats look like. I think I'm done. Mm. Excited, excited to see it. Take your time, take off tape and rush. It's oh look, cool light. Nice dark house at the back. If you bring it a bit higher, then I can see the cats. Oh, I see the sleeping cat. Yeah, and uh, next to the shop. There is also <laughs> cool. Well, I'd say it looks the Van Gogh style, and it definitely looks as post-impressionism style. Good job. And I'm happy you enjoyed the perspective. Then it means we can make more of it. What are your feelings, Juliet? How do you feel about today's artwork? I liked it. Cool. Well, I'm going to stop recording, but we can still hang out, talk and discuss. And next lessons, we're going to proceed. Cool. Bye-bye, everyone.